And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, episode 19. Well, there's some work being done on the house. I hope that's not too loud. Um, we have today um, a very gorgeous, very interesting, unique Ford Aerostar, and this will be sort of a unique uh, format as well. Um, so without further ado, this is a gorgeous, stunning, striking, handsome, dashing 1994 Ford Aerostar. And as you can see by the description, it says Eddie Bauer in big text as they put it across the screen as a big selling point, the Eddie Bauer edition. Um, of course, one of the first and most noteworthy collaborations between designers and car companies was the uh, Eddie Bauer series of Ford vehicles. They had, of course, the Aerostar, which I believe was the first one. It could be wrong about that. Broncos and Explorers. Later, the Ford Excursion got an Eddie Bauer edition. The funny thing about this is I don't think it's actually an Eddie Bauer edition. And through some research, I'll show you, I'll uh, show you why I think that, but certainly a, a noteworthy vehicle. Um, this vehicle is for sale in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's got 136,464 miles and it's listed for $8,995. So you can see the, the uh, price of the Aerostar is already going up on the used market. Now this is not a super low mileage vehicle, and it's listed for um, you know nine thousand dollars essentially, so quite a quite an asking price on this. Now this is at a dealership, and I was uh, thinking I used to do this thing called Aerostars of Craigslist on Instagram, um, and Marketplace I think has sort of taken over Craigslist as the primary source for finding cars. But of course. Um, uh, you can still find them in other places other than Marketplace. So I was going to go out and find um, an Aerostar on Craigslist just to see what was out there and test the market and check in. And the and way I uh, searched Craigslist, of course, is with the great Auto Tempest. Now, Auto Tempest famously sponsors Car Trek, and they've gotten into the sort of, sort of the YouTube scene. And I do use Auto Tempest. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but if Auto Tempest would like to, uh, you know, sponsor a growing young channel, Janky AF, uh, then they would be most welcome to do so. So I was on Auto Tempest, and I just happened to be wearing this blue shirt today, doing some work. And um, before I could even get to the Craigslist results, this one popped up at this dealership through uh, Cars.com here. And uh, you will see this little number right here, this 86. We're gonna do a video on that, don't worry. Uh, the funny story on that, because I originally saw this exact vehicle on Marketplace and uh, it was selling for a considerably uh, bit less than it's selling for here. Um, but uh, we'll talk about that one later. Today we are focusing on this beautiful blue 94 Aerostar, uh, which claims to be an Eddie Bauer edition. We'll get into that now. So. First things we have to uh, note about this Aerostar, and we'll blow up some of these pictures here for you, um, is its stunning blue color. Now this is not, I believe, Portofino blue, which we did another sport version on. It seems to be a slightly darker shade. And I did recently just find an Aerostar color booklet. Uh, I believe it's only for you know the earlier editions, like 86, 87. I might buy that off eBay so I can um, have all the exact color names, a nice piece of uh, memorabilia and paraphernalia. This is, seems to be a little bit of a darker blue, unless my eyes and the sunlight are playing tricks on me. Now, I, I already mentioned that it is a sport model, and of course it is that because we have um, the clear identifiers of a sport model, which are the running boards, the um, sort of little mini aero package down here, and of course the body colored grill. Now this was only on, I've just recently learned, darker colored aero stars or lighter color aero stars is it? I can't remember, I believe on, um, some of the Aero Stars that were sports, the grill was still gray, which was an interesting uh, choice by Ford. And of course, your headlight bezels here are also body colored. Just uh, and of course, they were all in two tone, a, a remarkably uh, beautiful looking aesthetic package. And I think this front quarter, three quarter view captures it really perfectly because you have these running boards down here. Now, I will say, when you look at a sport version straight on, it's kind of funny because the the body kit does not really extend to the the rear bumper. It kind of extends to the front bumper, but not sort of jutting out on the side just sort of on the bottom so it's kind of a funny look in a you know straightforward view certainly a very uh, pleasing to the eye overall look and it does look quite sporty interior wonderful wonderful blue all blue interior now um, you know 
The blue interior, I think, was actually quite rare on the Aerostar. Occasionally, you will see an all-red interior, um, specifically more, I think, in the early 90s that was a thing, and those are, I'd love to get my hands on one of those one day. Um, and gray interiors seem very, very popular, especially, you know, with sort of the red piping on the seats, which obviously this does not have. But an all-blue interior on a blue Sport Edition Aerostar is very unique, I believe, and also the fact that this is an extended version in the Sport. Now, I did see recently, unfortunately, I think it's gone now, um, a, a deep red. They never made like a fire engine red, but they made like sort of a dark red, not quite a maroon, um, extended version uh, sport model. And that was uh, quite rare. And I do think the extended sport model is particularly funny because if you're going to make a sport model of a minivan, chances are you're going to make it in the in the standard length and not the extended length, just because if it's sporty, the idea of having, you know, 19 more inches on the back of it or, or 20 inches, whatever it may be, um, seems a little funny. So anyone who sprung for the sport edition of the extended version of the Aerostar um, seems like a very, very interesting choice. But they made them, and this is uh, proof of it. So, of course, your sport version, excellent. Look at this. Just this is a perfect picture. This blue is just breathtaking. It's not quite to your, like, Audi Sonic blue or whatever they called it, that very uh, popular color. But certainly a very, very bold, bright shade. And you can see your bumpers here. Instead of chrome on these little accents here, we have them blacked out. That's a very nice touch. And, of course, you have your beautiful little red pinstripe down here with your sport writing on it, also a factory roof rack. This does look to be in very, very pristine condition. Here, of course, is your sport logo there, and it is an Aerostar XL. Just, uh, man, drink it in for a second. All these wonderful, wonderful accents. You can see your beautiful hatch here. Boy, really, really nice condition. Now, I can see why they're asking this price. The paintwork looks to be phenomenal. Um, and I love when you find an Aerostar at a dealership because uh, it's just funny. Maybe they took it in on trade. Maybe they bought this at auction. Who knows how they came to acquire it. But it's just a whole lot of van. Um, and certainly stunning in profile here. And uh, the nice thing about a lot of dealerships, not always, but oftentimes they will have more pictures than a, a private classified ad. So you can sort of gush over those. Um, of course, you see your wonderful little line jutting down here with your beautiful little sunlight just bursting on it, creating that little um, flick of light. And uh, your side mirrors here, nice black plastic, which sort of like sits nicely within the whole window frame itself. And of course, your um, cowl here and windshield wipers. And it looks like there's even a tint on these windows, which just kind of helps sell the sportiness and the overall sleekness of the vehicle. Again, we see it in front three quarter, this time from the other side. This is at Carmel Motors in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I believe this is actually now, of course, one of my favorite shots is the just straight on front face view of the Aerostar. And certainly with the little aero kit here, it looks even more sort of enticing and sporty and just uh, all your sort of curved around air inlets that match on your bumper and your grill. Just a beautiful, beautiful design. So like friendly and um, still sporty at the same time. Wonderful, wonderful pictures of this vehicle. I wish there were a car. Here's some more pictures of the interior. Now, again, it, it, it looks to be a gray, but I think it is slightly different than the gray. I could be wrong, but the seats look a little bluer than a normal gray seat on an Aerostar. So I would go ahead and call this like a blue interior. Um, your seats have a little bit of wear on them, but no rips or tears, just showing their age a little bit. You can see your plastic down here. Looks like they've detailed the vehicle, which is very nice. Um, your updated interior here your second gen we'll call it again this um sort of and, and in the gray seats you notice it a little bit less but in the blue seats you really can see the difference in, in two-tone here um on your colors and i just love these aerostar seats i think they're so unique for any vehicle and they, they certainly stand out to me and i haven't really seen anything prior since i have said like these remind me of a lot of early 90s honda seats um, in both their design and sort of the color you can see your rear bench seats here, also in very good condition. The two-tone continues. And you can see this, this plastic paneling here looks more like a blue. Even the seat belts might be blue as opposed to, um, you know, gray, which is sort of your standard Aerostar color. So very, very beautiful. Almost depends on the picture whether they look gray or blue. But I'm, I'm, I'm going with my gut here and saying that this is indeed like a blue interior. Your carpeting there as opposed to a gray. Your headliner still looks gray, and that's how you can almost differentiate as well. So just immaculate inside, 
and uh, you can fit the whole family in here plus some friends and I've, I haven't talked about this too much but it looks like this may even have some uh, rear climate control and also your rear radio controls here so you could plug in headphones to these you have volume adjustments on them so you know in the days before DVD players and phones and all that you could uh, you know have your kids listening on headphones in the back seat and be occupied and not ask are we there yet every five minutes I don't know, I'm wondering if these are the, the seats that fold down into the bed. I have a feeling because this one's a little not as wide, they may not be. Some of those Aerostars, I have to figure out which ones exactly. And it may have been only the Eddie Bauer edition that folded down perfectly flat um, into a bed. So you didn't have to like take the seats out and put a bed in if you wanted to go camping in it or something like that. So another great uh, Aerostar feature that was well thought out and, and uh, quite ahead of its time. So we'll just take in some more pictures. Now this is where it really looks blue and not gray, you know? So you have your beautiful little door panels here. I love the color-coded automatic window panels for up and down there. And just this little splash of color adds so much to the interior. And I, and I appreciate that. And you don't see that in a lot of vehicles anywhere. Like it just seems like the Aerostar stands alone in so many of these little tiny touches, but they all add up to this quite unique and, unique and uh, breathtaking package. So you can see, looks like the actual handlebar here has either faded or maybe it was a slightly different color from the factory or just faded differently over time because of the angle of the sun or the materials or whatever you have it but now it looks like this nice like two-tone blue and then you can see your door panel here adding yet another color so just variation on a theme i love when everything is sort of monochromatic in color but not quite all exactly the same so i call that variation on a theme so beautiful beautiful pictures here and um, again one of my favorite steering wheels of all time just beautiful look at your horn buttons here, your cruise control, everything you need, nothing you don't, not overly complicated, but also with some more advanced features that allow it to be very easily operatable. It looks like it does have a, an aftermarket uh, head unit here. I would go ahead and try to replace that with the original. My 1993 Aerostar Sport, which I just acquired, you can watch the video on that, um, the radio is actually quite good and what I love about it and this is a thing that I wish more modern cars would do is it almost has like not quite a full equalizer with your levels and everything but all your little adjustments for balance and tone and stuff are, are actual um, physical knobs that you can uh, manipulate to adjust all those things and I actually think it's a, um, a safety feature because you don't have to you know stare at a screen and like push on a thing and see if it works or not and the slider gauge and all these advanced sort of controls that you have in these modern newfangled cars um, so i would if i purchase this vehicle definitely put in re-put in the factory head unit um, but that's sort of neither here nor there again our beautiful gauge cluster shot our beautiful speedometer and odometer shot to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is actually the mileage that they claim and i believe the listed mileage is actually a couple miles higher than this so maybe uh, they took this and then drove it six miles or so there's your new radio um, again, your climate control is very, very simple, very driver oriented, right where you need them to be and a clear indication of which way the knob is pointed with this little sort of like beaker handle, we'll call it. Um, your rear wiper, your rear defroster, again, you know, the perfect era where the technology was advanced enough to have some of these nice creature comfort features, but not so newfangled that it becomes cumbersome, um, more difficult to use and more easy um, easier to break down and if there is a problem with it more expensive to repair so I just think it's a, a great great era of vehicles and um, a stunning one here without a doubt so obviously you can see this big Eddie Bauer what they should have written in this big red stripe is sport they don't even talk about the fact that it's a sport package and I think that is very um, you know easily identifiable and also a, a great selling point the sport was not um, made for that many years and and you did not see it chosen as a package that often I think the sport Aerostar is one of the more underrated Aerostars um, I, I, pur <laughs> I purchased one there so I've obviously put my money where my mouth is um, and I think it's just a great, great looking aesthetic package. Um, and it is that, an aesthetic package, because they talked about on Wikipedia, which we'll go to in a second, um, it says the Aerostar Sport was a largely a cosmetic package. And I think that's hilarious because they're giving it so much credit, even while they're saying largely, it's entirely a uh, aesthetic package. When, you know, when you say largely an aesthetic package, you're, you're suggesting that um, it was devoid of performance options, but 
the fact that you would say largely and not entirely or simply just say it was an aesthetic package, you're, you're leaving this weird little gap or suggestion that maybe there was some performance options added. And the only thing I can think of is this little bumperette down here, this little, um, what do you want to call that? Uh, you know, rear spoiler or uh, diffuser, I guess is the right word. And perhaps that gives you a little bit more downforce at high speed. Uh, that could be considered a performance uh, upgrade, <laughs> but uh, that certainly is a stretch. Um, but nonetheless, very funny little Aerostar trivia. So the reason I say this is not an Eddie Bauer edition, one, because it doesn't seem, there's no Eddie Bauer badging on it. There's no Eddie Bauer insignia on any of the seats. So it's pretty uh, devoid of any suggestion that it would be an Eddie Bauer. Aside from that, um, according to my research, and we'll jump here to uh, Wikipedia now, Aerostar Sport, 1992 through 1996. Um, so 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. They only made this for five years, and of course the Aerostar had a 12-year run. So less than half the model years had a Sport Edition available, which means that automatically makes them rare. Um, there were over 2 million Aerostars sold, and um, I don't know what percentage of Aerostars in that year range were sold as Sport models, but I imagine it's less than half. So you're talking about probably only you know a couple hundred thousand out of the 2 million, less than a tenth easily, I would say, are, are Sport editions and certainly the eyeball test would back that up because you really don't see them that often um now it has it says here in very plain black and white in 1992 aerostar sport was introduced as an option package available for any non eddie bauer aerostar wagon so you could get the sport package on any aerostar as long as it was not an eddie bauer so the two are therefore by definition mutually exclusive um, now it's too bad they didn't do that because an aerostar sport eddie bauer would have been like the ultimate creme de la creme but there's maybe just too much going on there visually and aesthetically and so i, I make it makes sense to me why those two wouldn't have any crossover it says, similar to the Chevrolet Astro RS, GMC Safari CS, and Dodge Caravan ES counterparts, the Aerostar Sport was largely a cosmetic upgrade. There we go again with that great line. Distinguished by their silver accented paint and sport pinstriping, even putting in uh, um, air quotes sport, or in this case, you know, written quote sport, kind of selling the idea that <laughs> it's just an idea and not actually um, any sort of thing of substance. The Sport featured integrated running boards with a color matched front air dam and color matched rear mud flaps. On darker colors, the front, there you go. So it's only darker colors, the front grill and chrome was painted body color. Now, I guess the only light color sport that I've seen, because Portofino blue is a fairly light color, and I guess maybe that didn't get the, um, the grill match, as we can see here in this picture. So it must have been the Portofino blue did not get the grill match. And then there is a, you, you see it fairly often if you Google Ford Aerostar, there's this, um, I think it seems to be like a factory ad photo um, of a silver Aerostar Sport. And that looks remarkable because it's not two-tone because, or if it is two-tone, it's a very slight alteration between the running boards, bumpers, etc., and the body color. So it's a very stunning, um, picture because it's like a monochromatic sport version of it and that grill of course is also gray now whether that's body color matched or not um you could go either way you could say it is because it's gray but also it's probably just the factory gray color and not the color of the body so it's slightly different that being said we're getting into the nitty-gritty but the silver aerostar sport is an absolutely stunning looking vehicle and certainly rare i would imagine so the trim version of an Aerostar Sport is most easily identified by its wheels. I would totally disagree because I think these wheel covers on the Aerostar Sport actually were used on different um, other non-sport Aerostar editions. I would say the running boards and the grill are the most easily identifiable features uh, in addition to the word sport on it. Um, perhaps I should go into uh, Wikipedia and alter the Ford Aerostar uh, Wikipedia page. I think I now probably have as good standing as anyone without trying to be braggadocious um, to speak on the matter. So aside from, you know, Ford executives. Um, so perhaps I should uh, take the liberty of uh, altering this page. But for now, it's fun to talk about and notice the differences between uh, my um, observations and the website's information. XL sport wagons with full wheel covers, XLT sport wagons less common with aluminum wheels. I would definitely vouch for that. An Aerostar sport with alloy or aluminum wheels is uh, extremely rare um, in my experience. So we'll go back to the actual 
Um, and now I'll, whenever I see a, a listing on cars.com, and this isn't to pick on cars.com, but I always check, because cars.com seems like a very anachronistic website. Um, it seems like CarGuru and um, Auto Trader are certainly more um, modern and more utilized than cars.com. Often you click on a link on cars.com and the, the car has either been sold or um, you know the dealership doesn't exist or something like that. So whenever I um, go on Auto Tempest and then cars.com for uh, a dealer listing, I'll actually always go to the dealership website itself and check to see if the vehicle is indeed for sale and if the dealership is indeed um, still active. So um, $89.95 translates on a 72-month loan. Now, I, I do highly recommend financing even very cheap cars, even sub-$5,000 cars, um, for various reasons, which I'll do in another video. But this is listing a 72... I would not recommend a 72-month uh, uh, note for um, such a, a vehicle of such a price. So at 5%, zero down for 72 months, you could be driving this for $145 a month, which uh, when you put it that way, nine grand doesn't sound so bad, does it? Uh, now this does say it has the four liter motor. Now I have to believe, I don't know this, but I think the four liter was offered much more um, often in extended edition Aerostars. And that makes sense because there's just more weight to push around. And so the four liter, a little bit of beefier engine would make sense. I think it's also available more often in all wheel drive models. And of course there is more in the Venn diagram of four wheel drive and um, Aerostars. There's more all wheel drive Aerostars that are extended length, which also makes sense. It's a big van, it's a cargo van, you want all wheel drive you're probably gonna go with the uh, extended model. Now there are standard length all wheel drive Aerostars and those are very rare and I've actually done a couple of them here on Year of the Aerostar and those to me are a really enticing uh, spec because I tend to prefer the standard uh, length although the, the, the extended length is something that I would like to um, purchase one day down the road just to you know in, in, I want as many different variations as possible and I would like to just see how the extended length um, drives and see how it see how it um, is to live with every day and 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 for fitting fitting a full four by eight sheet of plywood in that's something that is appealing to me so one day I would like to get an extended version and um, it would be nice to get a four liter in that too just because I do not have a I've never owned a four liter Aerostar and certainly something to brag about with the biggest you know, largest uh, capacity, um, largest displacement engine offered from factory in an Aerostar. So 1994 Ford Aerostar wagon, Eddie Bauer. Not quite accurate, I would uh, wager to say. But um, nonetheless, we can forgive the dealership. I'm not sure why they listed it as an Eddie Bauer. Um, but uh, let's see, Carmel Motors, if you're out there watching, um, please change your little red tag to say sport instead of Eddie Bauer. Um, and then you will be most accurately portraying this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful vehicle that you have at your website. Apparently there's 46 interested buyers here. So I uh, this little eyeball logo, which is uh, a little bit uh, creepy, but also kind of makes sense for, you know, what they're saying. Um, and that's pretty, uh, you know, encouraging that there's 46 people interested in this Aerostar right now. That's great. I hope one of them uh, takes it home. And if you're somehow watching this and somehow buy it, well, let me know because I'd love to drive it and review it. So there you have it. Um, a beautiful 1994 Ford Aerostar Sport, we'll say. Um, Sport XL, Aerostar XL Sport Extended Wagon is probably the full title on that. Um, just gorgeous, and it's so nice to see that these are still out there, and I actually appreciate that dealerships are selling these too. It's always heartening when you see a dealership selling an Aerostar because it hasn't been relegated to the classifieds where someone's trying to dump their old non-functioning vehicle. These vehicles are good enough and are reliable enough and in wonderful condition that they can be sold at dealerships right along with fifty and $60,000 trucks um, of the modern era. Go back to the start here and look at this beautiful picture here as we uh, bid you adieu. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Year of the Aerostar. Always a pleasure to talk about and, and observe these wonderful, wonderful machines. And we'll have another one for you very, very soon. So until then, Janky do thanky.